Hey guys, welcome to the fourth lecture of unit Money and Banking Economics class 12th. And in the previous three lectures, we talked about mon- money meaning definition, supply of money, money creation, and money multiplier. So these are the very important and interesting topics that you must know about this chapter as you guys know that money is a very essential part of our life this this thing is actually i'm telling you from the past three lectures because this is actually really important so i hope you have checked this out and if not go check that out first because it will give you more clear more clarity and visuality for the upcoming lectures and this will this lecture will be about the central bank the meaning the definition of central bank and the functions of the central bank okay <clears throat> so what okay what is who is the central bank of india that is rbi reverse bank of india who prints our notes and you know manages all the monetary things of our country that is rbi reverse bank of india is known as the central bank of india which is also known as monetary authority of a country for any country central bank is a monetary authority of a this it is a apex institution of monetary means it is a very important part of a country which controls all its monetary terms all institutions deal with which deal in money consist of monetary systems being that important institution it organizes supervises regulates and develop the monetary system of a country yeah central bank have been established in all financially developed countries every financially developed country has its has its own central bank they are known by different names in different countries in india central bank is known as reverse bank of india which is established in 1935 as a stakeholders bank and nationalized on 1st january 1949 in uk called bank of england and in russia it is known as gos bank gos bank like gos bank okay. so this is a basic information about the central bank now you know India central bank UK and Russia central bank it's a general knowledge question i hope you get it yeah so now we are going to discuss the functions functions of central bank there are total seven functions of a central bank first one is issue of currency banker through government banker's bank and supervisor controller of credit and money supply lender of last resort custodian of foreign exchange or balance cleaning house agent okay so these are the seven functions of central bank now we'll discuss it in detail okay first one is issue of currency the central bank is given the sole monopoly of issuing currency in order to secure control over the volume of currency and credit here the sole monopoly means like it is the only bank which can control which can issue the currency no other bank has a right to issue currency of india only rbi that is central bank of india has this right okay these notes circulate throughout the country as a legal tender money this is the only legal money which is used as a medium of exchange in for goods okay it has a it has to keep a reserve in form of gold and foreign securities as per security rules against the notes issued by it okay if we can have you know gold and foreign securities in exchange of security rules it may be noted that rbi issues all currency notes in india from rupees 2 and above again it is under directions of rbi that one rupee note and more coins are issued by government mints okay this is a important point in this part that the one rupee coin sorry one rupee note and 
all the coins that are used in our country as a ex- medium of exchange are being developed and made by the government and not by the RBI. RBI only make paper currency that is notes from rupees two and above, like ru- two rupee, five rupee note, ten rupee note, twenty rupee note, fifty rupee note, hundred rupees note, five hundred rupee note, two thousand rupee note. These are the currencies made by the government uh, RBI and one rupee note, one rupee coin, two rupee coin, five rupee coin, and ten rupee coin, twenty rupee coin, which is newly introduced in our country, has been made by the government of India, not by the RBI. Okay, remember, this is an important point. The central government of a country is usually authorized to borrow money from the central bank. When the central government expenditure exceeds government revenue, the government is unable to reduce its expenditure, then it borrows from RBI. Okay, what does this mean is like, whenever government needs money, the expenditure of government is more than the revenue of the government, then government go to RBI for rescue. Yes government goes to RBI for the rescue this is done by selling security bills bonds you know there are multiple things like say bills bonds of company which we buy and then these are used to sell and with RBI creates new currency or notes for the purpose I hope the issue of currency the first point is clear to you all guys now second point Banker to the government. Yes, banker to government. Central bank functions as a banker to the government. How? This is a very crucial point and important point to know about. Yes, bankers. RBI works as a banker to the government. Means both central and state government carry out all banking businesses. It keeps their cash balances in current account which will uh, with the central bank. Similarly, central bank accepts receipts and payments on the behalf of the government. Also, central bank carries out exchange, remittance and other banking operations on behalf of government. Central bank gives loans advance to government for temporary period and when necessary it also Give, manages the public debt of the country yes it manages the public debt of the country when it's needed and one more thing to remember is the central government can borrow any amount of money from RBI by selling it to be security to the latter yes this one must be remembered by you that the central, central government can borrow any amount of the any amount from RBI by selling its securities to the latter Okay, but there are more points to be discussed in the functions of central bank and that will be continued in the fifth lecture of the series. I hope you are enjoying it. I hope you are getting all the points done and third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. These points will be discussed in the next video. Thank you.